Okay, hey, how you doing? <clears throat> We're going to talk about uh, how it is that you write the equation from a graph. We've been working with going from the equation to drawing the graph, so we're now going to work our way backwards. <clears throat> so up here I give you a function, and I'm not going to tell you which function it is. You just have to recognize which pattern is it following here. So if I take a look at this one, okay? This one here deals with the sine function because you can tell by the pattern of where it starts at a, at a value, it goes down, then it goes up. Whereas opposed that it's not starting at a value going to some point going lower or starting a value going to a point going higher. So it's just a pattern that you need to recognize. So I take a look at this function. I know it's the sine function. So immediately because I know it's the sine function, I'm going to put up the equation. Y is equal to D plus A sine in parentheses. There are two different formulas I can have here. So I got the BX plus C. Or I can recognize that this right here, this b value, is a multiplier. So it can also be rewritten as y equals d plus a sine b times the quantity of x minus x minus c. So I've got the formula d plus a sine of b of x minus c and d plus a sine the b times the quantity of x minus c because b times x will still occur up here. And that's important because there's two ways that we can write this equation. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to look at how is it that I can take all the information out of here. First things first, you have to know what D stands for, what A stands for, what B and C all stand for. Well, D stands for a vertical shift. So what I need to look at is that this is my x-axis. Does my function start on x-axis? And if not, I need to look at the amplitude and where the center of my function is. Well... <coughs> Remember that amplitude is a measurement of halfway between the distance of your maximum and your minimum. So if I take a look at my minimum, my minimum for this function is 0, and my maximum for this function is 4. So halfway between 0 and 4 is 2. So I go up to 2, and you take a look that this okay, is where your amplitude is measured from. So I have a function with amplitude of 2. And I've now, by doing that, I now just figured out where my vertical shift is. Because that amplitude is measured from the centering of the, the function's value. So, I come up here, I can take a look at some things, and I can begin to fill this in. So, amplitude, which is the A value, is a 2. Okay. So, I come up here, I get Y equals, well, D happened to be my vertical shift, which was up from the x-axis, so up in in a vertical shift is represented by positive 2, so I can put a positive 2. A. A is also going to be 2, which we calculated, so it's 2 sine of <clears throat> which formula I'm going to use, I haven't decided yet. Okay? But the important thing is here is you have to recognize is this going to be a plus or is it going to be a minus? And the plus is there is if your function starts out with now being sine that it starts at its value and it goes up to its maximum. Well, this one starts at its value and it goes down to a minimum. So this is a negative sine function. It's a negative 2 sine. So <clears throat> I can continue on with this. And the way I'm going to continue on with this one is I'm going to use the second formula. And in another video, I'll explain the other formula. So this second formula here just requires on you figuring out what is B. Well, B is acquired. Okay, it, it is used to how it alters the period. And it alters the period by doing 2 pi divided by b, which is equal to my period. So therefore, b, <coughs> b is equivalent to, by doing some algebraic math here, okay, b is equal to 2 pi divided by if I knew what the period length was. So by looking at this, okay, you can go through, you can multiply by b on both sides, you get bp, and then you divide by p, so 2 pi divided by p. So b is equivalent to 2 pi divided by the period length. Well, the period length is from the beginning of my function to the end of my cycle. So if I begin my cycle with something, to the end of my cycle. So if I take a look at this, my cycle starts at negative pi over 4 and ends at 3 pi over 4. So therefore... That distance happens to be pi. So if I come up here and I do b is equal to 2 pi divided by pi. And the way I got that was 3 pi over 4 minus pi over 4, negative pi over 4. So 3 pi over 4 minus 
negative pi over 4 it gives you 4 pi over 4, which is just pi. So 2 pi divided by pi is 2. So now I can come up here and I can start to fill this in again. So I get the 2. Remember the x stays where it is, it's just x. So I'm multiplying it by x. Now c, c represents the horizontal shift. So all I have to do is come back to my function here and go, okay, it didn't start on the y-axis part here. So there is a horizontal shift. So the horizontal shift in this case happened to be negative pi over 4. So when I come into this formula, it is x minus negative pi over 4. And then I just fill it in. So from there, so now what I'm left with is this function here. And all I have to do is go through and clean up some of the algebra skills. So the function I'm going to be left with is y equals 2 minus 2 sine. So this is the part that I need to clean up. So in parentheses goes 2 times x. So this just becomes a distributive property problem. So 2x. Now a negative times a negative means it's going to be positive in here. So 2 times pi over 4 is pi over 2. So my final equation of this function is y equals 2 minus 2 sine of the quantity 2x plus pi over 2. So I hope that helps with homework when you're trying to decipher on how to do these problems.